Thank you for tuning in to the Natty News Daily Podcast. This episode is brought to you in part by our sponsor, Core Nutritionals. You can check out corenutritionals.com for all your supplement needs and use code Natty News Daily at checkout to save 20%. Enjoy the episode. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Natty News Daily Podcast. This is interesting doing like a, a an opening with all of us here. I'm used to doing my own little segment now. I was about to just go off on a different tangent. But mm -hmm. we are joined by Ace Baldwin again. Uh, again, I don't remember the last time we aired an episode. We recorded an episode not too long ago, right. but it was lost lost to the internet. So this is take two. And this is going to be a slightly different episode, I think, because that episode was recorded prior to the mayhem. I see you wearing the shirt there. Yeah. This one's post. So maybe we've had some time to reflect, think about the season, the career, and we're going to dive right into that. But I want to turn it over to you first. For the people that might not follow you, might not have seen our first episode with you, give the people a little bit of detail on you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Ace Baldwin, uh, PNBA pro, NGA pro, um, WNBF pro, 20-year competitor. And um, uh, you can find me on uh, the social medias under March 4th Fitness. So um, yeah, been doing this a bit like a lot of competitors, also a trainer, also a coach, um, lifetime drug free. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. You've been living it, breathing it, doing it for quite some time. I have, man. It has been, you know, how I, a big part of how you define yourself, I think at a certain point and you're just trying to live life, um, as an example of uh, what would be the most fulfilling to me as far as competing, eating, all the other things that it bleeds into in your life as far as um, success, um, how you treat people, how you, you know, from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed most of the time. Uh, so yeah, absolutely. Have lived the life ever since I was bitten by the bug from that first show in uh 2003 20 years yeah it's yeah. a trip it is it is that's 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 the journey and i love the fact that you bring up like the non-gym and non-stage related aspects of like how bodybuilding right. has helped you because that's something i preached to a lot of younger individuals and athletes as well that i think often goes right. overlooked right like you build such good hopefully time management and dedication consistency you know it's it's skills that most people probably lack nowadays. Right. Yeah, I totally agree. It's, um, you know, I, I came from a, a Marine Corps background, right? That was like my college right out of high school. So I already had a certain amount of structure instilled in me, whether I wanted to or not. Um, but I found it very kind of hand in hand when it came down to like, oh, you got to be this meticulous and this anal retentive to like truly get what you want out of it. And I was like, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, so, but uh, yeah, so it, it's the kind of thing where if done right, it can't help, but kind of hold you to a higher standard um, mm -hmm. it, in all aspects of life, whether it's family, a business, uh, friends, um, you you're trying your best to be your own hero and it's not perfect. And, um, I, I had a Facebook reminder the other day and it was like from a decade ago and it said something like, I can't even remember exact, but it was like, what I do doesn't make me think I'm better than you. I'm just trying to be a better version of me. You know, it's like we, you know how it goes. We get judged right off the bat for sure. As soon as we either say bodybuilding or we look a certain way. And I've had uh, a long time to try to break that stereotype almost on a daily basis, right? So it's a lot of smiling and it's a lot of how do you interact with people? And, um, you know, we, we kind of get a bad rap, I guess, just because it's, well, we know why. Yeah. So, yep. yeah. Yep. We'll leave that unanswered, unspoken. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So let's understood. Uh, yeah. 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 Let's get the low hanging fruit out of the way. Let's talk this season 
it was yeah. a good season for you like you you set mm-hmm. off air you kind of accomplished the shows right, you wanted right. to do so let's let's hit them and then let's move into some of like the deeper topics here yeah absolutely you know uh the first show was may 20th uh, and that was the uh npc contra costa here in uh, northern california which um has been a big show. I've done that before in the past. You know, it's obviously been well over a decade. I did went quite a long time without doing any NPC shows. This kind of just stayed with the untested side um, or the tested side, right? So, um, but uh, I've always fared well with that, but never won um, the overall. So, yeah, it was um, and. I kind of flipped the switch as far as uh, contest prep January 1st, knowing that I was, you know, within 10 to 12 pounds of stage weight already. It truly is my happy zone. Honestly, people go, wow, you stay within 10 pounds of stage weight. It's like, it really is kind of my sweet spot and my set point if I'm eating healthy and, you know, Mm -hmm. it's not like I get to have whatever I want, but it's like, I really like to live my off-season life um, a lot closer to striking distance than I used to in the past. So knowing that I had five to six months to really take my time with that mm-hmm. that cut, at least for that first show, um, yeah, it was really good. Um, won my class and knew that I had to go up against this absolute giant that uh, ironically was the same overall winner at my very first show. So 20 years ago, he was this big, huge dude that looked like he's got a foot on me and, you know, 70 pounds. And yeah, uh, even more than that now, considering that uh, is NPC. Mm-hmm. So I couldn't slay that giant, but that's okay. We took away the uh, class win and it was good momentum. Um, going into the very next show, which was just one week later the npc uh cascadian up in central oregon Mm -hmm. so you know that's where i had been living the last two and a half years so it really the whole point of that was all the friends and co-workers that i had made within these two and a half years that were like we want to see you do your thing you know (laughs) and i was like Mm -hmm. Uh, all right. And I had moved back down to Northern California. So I was like, I'll still come up and do the show. You know, it's a day of driving eight hours North and kind of sucks to do that. Like a day or two right before you actually compete. But um, yeah, no, it was no big deal. So again, another NPC non-tested show one week after competing and um felt uh that the previous week's protocol went perfect so it was just kind of like duplicate that don't uh don't break what isn't broken type thing so same meals same water you know all of that right um and that one um i knew i had my class but I really was intimidated by the, you know, the middleweight and keep in mind, I'm, I'm a, I'm a lightweight, right? So mm-hmm. five, seven, one under one sixty on stage. It's like, there, there's several classes ahead of me mm-hmm. that all outsize me easily. So I was a bit um, intimidated by uh, some of those guys. And I had the biggest help from, um you know another pro aaron orton so wnbf Mm -hmm. pro and uh fellow marine as well good buddy of mine uh but he was there to see the show came all the way from eugene and we were chatting in between prejudging and finals and he was texting me and he was like man i really think you've got a shot at winning this overall i mean i see some chink chinks in these guys armor and if you pose bigger and you absolutely command that stage presence. And he gave me that confidence, a couple pointers with like how I was holding some of my poses. Mm-hmm. And uh, I went into the finals like I am I'm going with as much poise and confidence as I can. And I'm going to even if I don't win it, I'm going to act as if and um, and, you know, thank God it, it went my way. And uh, so, yeah, that was incredible. That was absolutely a bucket list type thing to 
get the uh, overall at an NPC show after, you know, 20 years mm -hmm. of, of shooting for that and coming up short a few times. Yeah. So and, yeah. and that's a huge goal, huge goal. Do you remember right. just, just maybe for a few like little gyms for some of the younger competitors that are listening, do you remember some of those specific things you changed that helped you kind of edge out the bigger guy in the posing? Um, you know, it was, it was a couple things where, you know, he was sending me, Aaron was sending me pics that he was taking from the crowd where he was like, man, you, you're, you're too hunched over with your rear lat spread. You know, you gotta, gotta lean back a little bit more, really try to get it out versus round it out, you know? So it was little things like that. It was kind of like, um, a side tricep shot. I needed to roll my shoulder back a little bit more, kind of give that a little bit more, you know? Um, so little things where I had considered up until this point to kind of be a master of at least my own posing. It was like, Hey, li listen to another fellow seasoned pro and uh, pay attention to these pictures that he's sending you, you know, be, be, let it humble you. And it's okay to make some minor tweaks. Like, think about this. I've done this with other competitors too, where I'm giving them, I'm like, this is what you need if you hope to win. Like, mm -hmm. you can show the illusion that you have years more development when we don't have time to have years more development, right? So, I mean, that's the deal is it's smoke and mirrors. It's showing your strengths. It's hiding your weaknesses and um, trying to, really feel that uh, you're presenting your absolute best. I mean, I, I don't have a problem telling a lot of people that, hey, I beat you today because you didn't know how to pose. Sorry, I wasn't going to tell you that this morning. You know, and it's like, I'm wanting to help you now. So, yeah. And one thing that definitely goes overlooked, and I, until you've stepped on stage, you don't really realize how different it is to pose with a tan on especially when you're oiled, especially mm -hmm. if you use dream tan, right? Like you can pose and right. pose and pose for months on end just by yourself and feel very comfortable, but you start slipping around with the oil on and everything. Yeah, it's, yeah absolutely. It's very different. You oh yeah. You, your something. thumbs can't get, you know, no grip back there. And uh, yeah, you're definitely pretty greasy. And, and then the nerves get you sweating and you just feel like a slick, like, seal in the water you know so you're absolutely <laughs> right you uh when you all put it all together it is um quite different so mm -hmm. and that's one thing that it's a trip you're watching these new newbie competitors and the nerves are just getting them to where i'm like have you practiced this shit at all you know mm -hmm. like the way, when they're hitting a pose and they're literally looking to see if it's flex i'm like you don't need to look at it buddy you should be so damn good at this by now but so for me i was lucky to where it's like i've got 20 years 50 plus shows it feels so second nature to me i mean i i almost don't sweat at all up there and they can wear us out and i'm like let's go you know where other people are just kind of it's really fatiguing so to have that posing conditioning and that poise and control your breathing, um, yeah, yeah, no, it was, it was definitely a strength of mine. And I think that really helped. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that's the first two shows of the season. Right. And I think we can all kind of assume what the third one was, right? This yeah, exactly. Yeah, one, right? yeah. I wore it on. Yeah. And it really, for me, was my pinnacle. Um, it was the one that even before uh the very first show it's what i held in in highest regard and what really was going to be like the i i want to have that be my finest form ever and i've got time to do that so if i need to tighten up I, and keep in mind i had a month and a half to go from the second and the third and when you're already in contest shape I mean, and keep in mind, it, they weren't stepping stone shows for me as far as conditioning. I'm showing up as the conditioned guy at the entire show, even in May. So it's not like, oh, I'm going to still lose five more pounds. It's like, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing a tune-up show and not bringing my best. So for me, it's um, a matter of trying to be absolutely optimal for every single one of those. So 
it was a long time to hang in there and try to figure out like, do you build food up a little bit? Do you kind of give yourself a diet break? But that can be a slippery slope for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, just the amount of time to go from the very end of May to mid July was a big stretch. And I'm not going to lie. I was absolutely running on fumes and it got to be to the point where I was breaking my own rules. I was like, I want to be drier and, and more shredded than I've ever seen before. And I don't think I did that for the first two. So here we go. We're pulling out all the stops. We're going to have less food. We're doing more cardio. And um, it was it was pretty rough, you know, but we accomplished what I set out to, which was bring my absolute best and uh, started to see different new lines like in my legs that I had never have before you know new veins popping out you're really comparing old pictures and you're like yeah this is the tightest I've ever been have not compromised any muscle I'm comparing you know the this the scale weight and um, trying to be really critical and and just honest with what you see uh, but yeah I really had nothing left so I knew at that point, let the chips fall where they may. I still was going into that show with as much confidence as possible, even though I knew two specific competitors, again, much bigger guys with Aaron Orton. I loved that we got to finally compete together. Mm -hmm. And then it was a rematch with uh, Sam Okanola, you know, from our 2019 season together. Um, and I didn't know who else was going to be showing up, right? Unless you know them personally, they don't really give you the competing roster ahead of time. So it's like you show up and you kind of look at who's backstage. So I knew there was at least three of us and that wasn't going to be how I wanted to place podium wise if I got third. Right. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, we show up and, and there's world champ bottle Lake and it just happens to be in the show is like, great. All right, cool. And, you know, you could look at it two ways. You could go, man, why did you have to do this show? Or you go, good. You know what? We are all pros here, and it's simply an honor to share the stage with you. And even if you destroy me, as you did, it it's <laughs> like we all look like we belong. And so mm -hmm. you guys know how it feels when you're just like, man, I'm just in good company, and so are they. And Sometimes it's splitting hairs with literally the guy that's in first and the guy that's in last. And it's, mm -hmm. you have to hold your head high. You have to say, I'm not here just for the trophy. I, I'm here mm -hmm. for the experience. And um, I think the biggest part of it, if you are in the right mind and heart is, do you agree with the placing? And I did, you know, when I looked mm -hmm. back on, the pictures it was like yeah i agreed with my placing at least you know a couple of the uh guys that that placed ahead of me could have been switched you know we know how it goes it's subjective you're comparing this apple to that orange and what do you like yeah. right yeah. so yeah no it was okay good yeah good. so I, right. I i felt i felt good about how it ended um regardless of the placing and I just simply knew that it was my best I had ever been in 20 years of competing. Obviously, I could have done the Masters. And I've said, I never want to do the Masters. If I can't mix it up with the best there, I'm not interested. That's just how it is for me personally, nobody else. So, yeah, man. Mm -hmm. And and both Dan and I know the answer to this, right? You said this was your best in 20 years. Are you ending right. the career on the top of the mountain or, or what's up? What's the next step? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it absolutely feels right to um, officially retire from stage from competing mm -hmm. and um, everything in, in me, in my being and my soul and in just the data um says that's right and uh you know every every athlete's career comes to an end at a certain point and 
for me, it's by choice. And I've got nothing left to prove. I've got a lot more accomplishments than I ever thought I would and more than I ever set out to achieve. And I certainly have done it longer than I thought I would. I didn't think I would keep competing at this point, but I just knew as long as I kept improving um, and I still had the love and passion for it, I wanted to keep competing. Um, but now it feels right to just call it um, and not put myself through the rigors of of the diet phase. That That's really it. And um, mm -hmm. I don't have a problem admitting that I think I struggle with it more than at least what I hear other people struggle with. Mm -hmm. It's, um, it's really tough. And, and, and some people can understand that because they go, yeah, well, Ace, you usually show up the most conditioned guy. So what does it take to get there? Right. Um, and, and you're right. Maybe somebody else would feel it even more if they showed up as conditioned as you, right. That kind of mm -hmm. thing. Um, so it's a matter of what I put myself through to keep raising the bar every year as far as bringing those that level of, of shredded physique. Because if I don't have the size, I, I know I at least have the structure and shape. And then also you just throw in the best conditioning. And that has toppled so many much larger competitors right whether it has been this season or almost every season prior so mm -hmm. that has been a winning formula for me at least and you just always want to keep raising your own bar anyway i don't want to have a year or multiple years go by and you're just kind of bringing the exact same package i mean you know so you want to always kind of achieve more and do better so yeah um it's it's a good time to call it 20 20 years is a nice round number for me and um you know the prior to this season my last season was 2019 and a big reason for taking those 4 years off was moving out of state changing you know jobs um whether it's going through a divorce, um, COVID, right? That was huge. Mm -hmm. That shut down things for a long time. Mm -hmm. So I had this long break of not competing to where I felt my best since I started competing 20 years ago. Like I felt physically as optimal as possible, but more than I could remember because I had been competing for so many years. And I have been one that I admit I haven't given myself enough years of breaks like it is very common for people to do now. You hear about you guys taking three, four, five years off to get better. And it was like when I started, that was unheard of. People competed every year. So I was like, yeah, yeah I guess I compete every year. You don't even take a whole year off season because the, that same show comes back around. So you had a few months of off season and then you're dieting again. Right. So I did that most of those 20 years, I think really only taking three or so off other than the, the kind of massive COVID break. Mm -hmm. So, so that, I didn't that... get as much growing. Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say that forced, uh, forced time away just almost gave you a, a glimpse of what it could look like just living the lifestyle. Right. And not being the the competitive yeah. athlete side of things. Right. It, and it was such a refreshing change and it got me feeling like I really want to get to where I'm living my life in such an optimal, I use that word a lot, but, um, that is truly my goal is to live in the optimal zone, not just always passing through it on your way to either Shredsville or a deep off season, right? It's like you got this spectrum and somewhere in between is like a sweet spot of body weight, you know, your hormones, your metabolism, your libido, whatever, right? Um, 
your hunger, the exact right amount of food, how you feel energy wise, um, all of that. And I got to that uh, and I could have stayed there. I really, but I did miss the stage and I really felt like I want one more go at bringing even better than what I did in 2019. I did. And, mm -hmm. and so I, I let myself pretty much thrash my, <laughs> my body one more time. Mm -hmm. And so here it is kind of probably the long road of recovery to getting back to optimal because yeah, it takes you the better part of a year or even more to truly feel like your body recovers from that. If you really got down to my body fat percentage levels, right? And the longer you stay there, the more damaging it is. And you hopefully, you hope that it's not, um, not, what, what do you call it? Reversible. Yes, thank you. Right? You're not doing permanent damage. And uh, I, I have never done any kind of permanent damage. So uh, hopefully I haven't this time. I feel much better a little over a month now, post-show. But that first month, was hell and um i was telling my older daughter just last night i said i finally feel a lot closer to normal than um than the first month and it was such a as you guys know a, a mind fuck um mm -hmm. whether it is the you can't you can't help but binge eat way more than you plan you um the self-loathing the uh just feeling like your body is changing not for the better uh and not liking how it looks not liking how it feels it's it really messes with you and here i am a completely seasoned veteran having to admit that that i i don't escape that and it's hard to admit. It really is. I, I shared a little bit like on my Instagram and my social media feeds and, and I'm will with my YouTube channel as well. We're getting ready to shoot kind of a real, like no bullshit. Here's, here's some kind of behind the scenes, how this goes, but um, it's tough to admit. You feel like you're doing, you're pulling rookie moves you feel like a weak bitch that's giving in to, you know, the, the cravings and the, you're not supposed to put away a whole box of cereal at midnight at bedtime. You know what I mean? And, uh, <laughs> and, and, and wake up and feel like, Oh my God, what did I do? You know? So no, it's very, it's very unhealthy. And finally now this is like the first week, honestly, where I feel like, I could eat according to plan all day and not mess it up and I can get a good night's sleep and wake up and, and, uh, feel closer to optimal again. So yeah, that first mm -hmm. month was really rough for me. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. you talking about that for sure. Cause it doesn't get covered enough. We try to, right. um, and I know our own like personal pages, we've covered that Dan, you've talked about it a couple of times where you've done stuff as well, similar. And my, uh, I'm normally like after three or four days. Okay. But those three or four days are the ugliest days of my life. And I, uh, yeah. I can yeah. absolutely vouch for everything you said. It's just like eating food, not wanting <laughs> to eat it, but unable to stop eating it. Yeah. And like as soon as yeah. you're not, sick to your stomach you're starting again and it's yeah it's tough yeah and it gets better I, I feel like but here totally. you are 20 years in you oh, know what I'm saying no yeah you don't escape it because if you got into that shape it is going to treat you the same way and so you're just so hormonally messed up mentally like you can get physically full but you're not mentally full and so you're like, why am I continuing to eat? It is not healthy. It's not, you know, I often explain to people, I say, I feel like I have a decent idea of what it would be like to be a drug addict or an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. And you go, thank God, it maybe doesn't have the same repercussions as that. But as far as the like, 
you just want to grab like you can't stop yourself it's like you know food around you is as if you're an alcoholic and everybody's just drinking around you or mm -hmm. you know you're a junkie in in rehab and and somebody's just offering you drugs and how do you say no you know and when you know that you can go and have thousands of calories at every nearest gas station if you like uh, what stops you right especially when you're like there's no show in sight anymore so i don't have that scaring me straight and by it is. tonight here yeah yeah right and so um yeah, it's really hard. And uh, you feel like, where's your willpower, especially like me that holds yourself to a higher standard where you're going, come on, Marine, like, just do what you got to do. Or how about you're a coach, you're helping other clients not do this every week, you are, you know, uh, you're basically their psychiatrist, psychologist trying to help them when they told you they did this last week. And you're no better. And so that's hard. You're like, how do you admit that? Well, I have to. I tell people, listen, I I'm no better than you. And I struggle with this too. And sure, my kind of starting point is might be better. You get your own clients or, or athletes that roll their eyes and they're like, you're complaining that you feel out of shape. Like, give me a break, right? It's like, listen, I'm still comparing me to me, you know, and trust me, I feel horrible physically, you know what I mean? The bloating, the, mm -hmm. you know, not to share too much, but like going so hard that it's just a constant day on the toilet the next day. And just like, you're like, good, get rid of this, just go. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, yeah, just recognizing you're not having a healthy relationship with food. Um, mm -hmm. Man, who was the, who is one of the other lightweight uh world champ competitors uh wmbf i'm drawing a blank from like a decade ago uh country boy um just was a professor also brian oh geez Wicks? yes yeah, thank you yeah 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 um and i remember hearing an interview with him and he was just like yeah, I just, you know, I never seemed to cheat on my diet. And I was like, good for you, buddy. I'm like, <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> you hear other competitors that seemingly have an easier time with it. And you're like, well, I struggle like hell. Mm -hmm. So, and it is hard every time I blow it and then trying to fix it for a week and the back and forth. And it's like, so yeah, I, I admit, like, I think I have a harder time with the, the contest prep in diet phase than most mm -hmm. unless they're just not being honest about it which i can't i can't speak to that you know if 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 they have a easier time with it then good i don't want it to be bad for you i just have to admit that it is a real struggle for me and you guys i i feel like i can finally let myself off the hook as far as i don't have to keep putting myself through this mm -hmm. so I want to live life in the optimal zone now. Mm -hmm. And um, hey, if I can maintain a healthy body weight that is not much more than 10 pounds over stage weight and feel like I... All right, we go back. Not sure exactly where we left off, but uh, Ace, cool. I think this is a, a good place to get into uh, that transition period. You know, you've been competing for... We were touching, talking about it just... Before we started re-recording here, um, you know, you've been competing for 20 years. It's been a large part of your identity. Uh, you yeah. know, things are things are finite. You're you've kind of mentioned that uh, you're realizing the the finitude of things. And how are you right. managing that? And you know, how are you you know making that transition? Yeah, yeah that's um. Um, that might also be something that's harder for me than the next person, right? I kind of um, I've always paid attention to athletes, maybe of all all sports, and and you'll see them, whether it's a year after they're done or a few years, and that whole kind of like they've either let themselves go or they're like, what do I care? I'm not competing anymore, you know, or I don't play anymore, and I've always just like hated that. It was just like. 
hey, no, this, whether I'm competing or not, I, I hold myself to such a high standard as far as just health. It's not, it's not just about vanity in my physique, but it truly is this, um, you know, I've kind of come up with this saying, it's a, as strong as I can for as long as I can. And as strong as I can in a lot of different ways, not just physical strength, but um, yeah, everything that I, that I try to implement in my life. And um, so I still am going to, people will think that I could flip the switch and compete at any point. That's how it's going to be for me. So whatever age I am, it's going to be the best that that age can be. That's the deal. So I'm not going to hold my, you know, 50 year self to my 40 year self, but I'm going to be the absolute best. You know, I'm 45 now. And that's even hard to say. It's like, what, when did that happen? It's a trip, right? Especially when my physique says it's better than I was at 35 and 25. Right. So I've said for a long time, I'm trying to just be as young as I can from the neck down. So, uh, I'm still going to keep doing that. I am. And so, um, it's just, it's where I'm happiest. It really is. I'm doing it for me. When you know that you would do it, if you were the only guy living on the deserted Island, you know, like Tom Hanks, like I'd still train, I would still eat clean. It's none of this like, Oh, what do I care? Uh, it's over. Like, no, as long as I'm alive, I want to live as optimally as possible. And I just, it's, it's where my own happiness and tranquility lies. And it helps me obviously lead by example for my clients, you know, being a coach, being a trainer, being a dad. Um, how about being a son? You know, my mom who trains practically daily, she goes, I, I did my workout today. You know, she goes, thank you for teaching me. It's like, to inspire people to be their best. It's uh, I never want that to be over. Mm -hmm. I, and so I'm going to be doing that for the rest of my life. I, I'm not just going to fade away. Um, and yeah, I will still be incredibly impressive for years to come to the point where people are going to be like, Oh, you're not done. Or like, no, when you coming out of retirement again, and I'm gonna be like, you know what? I'm finally going to let myself stay in the optimal zone and I'm going to allow myself to have more muscle than I did while I was competing and um, a better hormonal balance and happier and less stress. Like I can put it to rest now because I've done it long enough. So yeah, I feel good about that. And yeah, it's uh, more of an excitement for what's next than like the post-season or post-career blues, I would say. There's maybe mm -hmm. some of that. I think there's a, a certain amount of bittersweet when it's over. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I've got enough pictures and I've got enough videos and I have enough memories to uh, just be so grateful for all of that. And sure, I could be bummed out about having never stepped on stage with you guys and countless other amazing competitors and friends that like, you know how it goes to try to get two of the same guys to step on the same stage. It's like mm -hmm. getting stars to align. That's it's like, Oh, you're not even in the same state or the same country, or you're taking this year off and, or next year you're competing, but I'm taking it off. Right. It's, mm -hmm. it's really hard to compete with some of your friends and colleagues. Mm-hmm. We'll pull you out of the crowd one of these days since you're only going to be yeah. 10 over. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It'll still be impressive, you know, but it'd be like, wow, okay. he's got some good chest hair, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You he go. could be there a lot go. darker. Right. Yeah. And with that, do you, do you tend to stay involved in the sport itself or, um, or more on the other side of stuff or, you know, with other life things or. Right. Yeah. You know, um, in the past I have judged. And um, I've helped put on local shows and um, I can see myself doing more of that in the future. So I think, you know, as a way to give back and really help promote the drug free side of it, especially if it's somewhat local and especially if I've got friends now 
Like I could totally see myself going up to Oregon and helping Aaron with his shows. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, helping Bob and Tina with the muscle mayhem for sure. You know, I, I so love and respect these people for what they do. I mean, they put their heart and soul into these shows and um, I just want them to feel appreciated. And uh, if I can help, then I will, if it's not going to like really put me out, you know, but uh, yeah, to feel like you can help expedite or be one more judge. That's got like the right pair of eyes, making sure that these competitors are getting the fair shake. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we've probably all been maybe misjudged or <laughs> judged unfairly and, it's like, who's on the damn panel there, right? Like, did you just let anybody, you know, Mr. 1985, nobody, you know, like, come on. So, um, yeah, I think to be a, a good judge or expediter um, or even a promoter, you know, is there going to be an Ace Baldwin classic someday? Like, maybe I won't put it past myself. I know I could uh, put together a damn good, well-ran show, especially knowing what, uh, how it should go, right? Mm -hmm. um yeah i could see myself doing that in the future besides just uh continuing to coach with clients mm -hmm. so yeah yeah i could be more involved yeah well, and we'd love, love to, to see that yeah <laughs> we're in the same yeah. <laughs> same <laughs> cakes right right um and obviously if anybody's in the area and and people want to get together uh whether it's you know, do a workout or uh, do another podcast, or if I could host somebody at my gym, um, yeah, put together a posing clinic, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot that at my level, I have earned the right to teach and mm -hmm. to guide. And I do enjoy that a lot. I mean, there's a big part of being a coach and a trainer that when you feel like you have earned the, that right to put people in the right direction when some of it is so like shake your head, like what is going on with this guy or that girl or, or how did this show go or who the hell gave you that, that diet, you know, it just is like, you really want, especially when it can be detrimental to people's health, physical health, mental health, all of it. Right. So yeah, you want to help these uh, other competitors and athletes do it right and do it at least the best they can when uh, it's going to be rough no matter what. So, mm -hmm. yeah, the kind of nobody gets out alive without it, uh, <laughs> the bumps and bruises anyway. So do it the safest and healthiest you, you can, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in the spirit yeah. of uh, helping guidance, why don't we – close this out with a, a message typically we do a message generally but I, I think we should break this up into into two categories so one a message for uh the younger athlete someone who's new in the game fresh in the game and uh you know what's your words of guidance or word you know message for them yeah and then also what would be your message for somebody who's kind of at the end of the tunnel and trying to figure out you know if they should hang it up what's what's there yeah. what's your yeah yeah sure absolutely you know um what i try to help a lot of the younger generation or even people that are just getting into this maybe they're a little bit older but they haven't competed before right um you got to be real honest with yourself and you have to know uh whether you really have the passion for it, uh, you're going to need to live the life to a certain extent if you expect to go all the way to stage level and not just stage level, but you expect to do well. Anybody can put the trunks on and or the suit on and get a spray tan and just show up, right? We see that it shows and it's just like, oh God, you know? Um, so you have to know if you really truly love it enough to go through with it. And it's okay to say, no, I don't if you kind of get halfway and you're like, this sucks, it's not for me. Like, I'm not looking forward to this. It's okay mm -hmm. to jump ship. Even though when Jeff Albert says the goal is to keep the goal, the goal, right? Yeah. The grass is always going to look greener on the other side, kind of halfway through. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. And know that it just takes time. 
there's no quick fix. Um, you know, making muscle takes years. Uh, even, even the contest shape side of it takes months and months, even though that's the short period of time, right? So just give it its time. It's like, like I have coined the phrase now, one good day at a time, just like the rest of us. It's no different for me either, right? So mm -hmm. yeah, be real with yourself. Be honest with yourself. Don't compare yourself to others. You might be dealing with a completely different genetic makeup, different metabolism, different bone structure, different time in the sport or just time in training period. Mm -hmm. So as well as making sure that you've got the right kind of guidance, you know, there's a lot of us that are happy to help you, but you got to reach out and don't be afraid to ditch somebody that's giving you crap guidance too, right? There's a lot of shitty coaches out there that shouldn't be allowed to coach. So uh, make sure you got the right person in your corner for sure. So, mm -hmm. um, and then the opposite, somebody maybe more in my zone um, talking with a good buddy just yesterday and he quoted uh, basically Michael Jordan just saying, you know, when, when you realize that that fire is gone and you step on the court, you shouldn't keep stepping on the court. You know, when you really realize that there's a certain amount of passion that just isn't, isn't there, it's okay to let yourself be done. And uh, I felt that way at the end of this season. I really did. I felt like I can call it here. And I think a lot of it had to do with my age. I don't want to keep doing this. I mean, uh, I have also said too, right? Like, even if I were to keep being awesome at 50, 55, I, if I knew there was one person in the crowd that said, he looks great, but you should have seen him a couple of years ago. I'm out. I'm done even if that was still really impressive. So I knew that I wanted to be done at my peak. And when I looked back at the pictures recently and the videos and said, yeah, I have never had a better physique than this. I'm at the top and there's a certain amount of fire for stepping on stage that is burning out. And I want to just be very, very, very healthy and contest condition is not healthy. We know that. Mm. We know that. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I can live at 90% contest shape, and that's real good for me. So I'm going to do that. So, yeah. Pay attention to how you're feeling. Be honest with yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Those are my, my little bits of advice for incoming and outgoing. So, yeah. Very good, Ace. Appreciate your time and sharing your wisdom. And yeah, 20 absolutely. Years, um, where can yeah. people find you? You mentioned your Instagram. You said you're going to think about posting more on YouTube. Where where can people find you? Yeah, right. So, um, well, I just can't thank you guys enough for having me. Really appreciate it. You're, you, you're the new blood, the new breed. <laughs> you're doing it right. You guys are, are so wise beyond your years. And um, so I really, it's an honor to be on your show. I only see huge things for you guys uh, individually and as a team. So it's really, it's an honor to me. Um, but uh, for me, that my next chapter is absolutely breaking out of my comfort zone and uh, going full force with my YouTube channel, March 4th Fitness. So you can look that up. That's F-O-R-T-H. So as in to March 4th, right? Um, mm -hmm. And yes, while well, March 4th is my birthday, um, the whole deal is because we can never go back and we refuse to get stuck here. So together we march forth. So that's the whole premise that no matter what has gone on in your life, no matter what you've been through, keep going forward. And we have to do this together. And the whole deal is that I struggle too. I struggle every day and you need to know that. And nothing comes easy for me. But hey, if I can do it, you can do it. And I want to help you that kind of guidance. So 
that is what we're doing. We've shot several professionally done uh, YouTube videos. We just launched our stretching routine video. So go over, check that out on YouTube. Again, March 4th Fitness. Um, Instagram, same thing, March 4th Fitness. Um, we're just firing up the TikTok as well. Facebook. Um, Want to thank my sponsors, uh, Citadel Nutrition, my new meal prep sponsor, Sonoma Fit uh, Meals. And um, any particular athlete or just person out there that wants to reach out to me directly, please do. Okay. I'm, I'm not too busy to get back to you. If you got a question for me, if you want to share how you're struggling, um, talk to me. I'm here. I'm here to help. Okay. My goal for the rest of my life is how can I impact the most people for the better, not just top notch bodybuilding competitors. I want to help the average Joe or Jane. I want to help the younger generation. I want to help as many people as possible. And, um, trying to do it in as simple of and as a realistic way as possible. It does not have to be complicated. Um, yeah, simple doesn't mean easy, but so that that is what we are doing. So, yeah. Very good, Ace. Like I said, if you, we appreciate your time and uh, yeah. you coming on the show. So thank right you so on, much. You guys. Hey, thank you again yeah. for having me, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Cool.